On the 28th of August, 2020, I stumbled across one of the most mysterious and unsettling VR games of all time. A game filled to the brim with ritualistic lore and spooky religious symbolism. A game that presented as nothing more than a sole developer's underdeveloped asset testing ground. But is there more to this game than meets the eye? Do the coded descriptions and reviews reveal deeper possibilities and hidden mysteries? Is there even a mystery to be solved? And if so, is this possibly the biggest gaming mystery of all time? No, of course not. Look, it's no Mount Chiliad from GTA or the locked treasure chest from Banjo-Kazooie, but it's still pretty damn weird. Let's talk about that. For those who are new to my channel, hello, hi, how are you? My name's GMAT and I make funny YouTube videos. So does everybody else on this fucking planet. Welcome to the goddamn human race. I also stream four days a week and have a quickly growing podcast. That's my thing, that's what I do, and that's how I pay my rent. My process to creating content has always been going in blind. And if I can be honest with you guys, most of the time when I'm filming a video, I picked the game that day, sometimes immediately before hitting record. It's how I work, and it's how I prefer to do what I do. So, on this day when I discovered this game, it was just like any other filming session. Most of the time, I don't do research on the games for my videos. I simply find something that's funny or something that sounds like it could be interesting and I hit record. I just go for it. Obviously, that isn't always the case. Occasionally, I have to change the way I approach a game if it's necessary. And for the game that this entire video is based on, I did approach it differently. So let's talk about that game, Illuminati Simulator VR. And to do so, we have to jump back to August 28th. <laughs> Boom, here we are. That day I had already recorded two videos. One was Perv Simulator VR for my main channel, which by the way, cracking video. Two was the thrill of the fight for my second channel, AKA my employers send noobs. Some days I have the energy to film three or four videos and edit as well, but because of thrill of the fight, <laughs> Jesus, I was buggered. Contrary to what I said before about mostly picking games the day I film them, I do have a four videos playlist on my Steam account. Don't let this playlist wash my statements about my process. That playlist is a barren wasteland of an idea. I never use it. It's just there as a thinly veiled attempt of proving to myself that I am professional. At the time, there were a few games in the playlist. Two of them were Illuminati Simulator and Bocce Simulator. Two simulators. From the primer images, both looked very minimal and both looked like shit. Mostly, these often free and always weird underdeveloped VR gems make the best videos, but unfortunately, they can also just not have enough content in them to make a video. I never did end up playing Bocce Simulator, because as you're gonna find out, I had my hands full. So, I'd already recorded two videos, and I figured to save myself wasting my time the following day, I would just jump into Illuminati Simulator VR and have a look around. This way I'd know whether or not it was worth making a video on the next day, or whether I could just put it in the bin. Off the top of my head, I can't really remember any other time I'd ever done this. Maybe it was because I was ahead of my work for the first time in months. Maybe there was some otherworldly force drawing me to the game. Maybe I was procrastinating. Who knows? I was procrastinating. Either way, I booted the game and I hit record, just in case I used any jokes or found some moments that I might be able to wedge into the video after I recorded the gameplay for real the next day. Nice. The game starts. There is no menu screen or title image or really any indication that the game has started. You simply begin in the foyer of a building. One initial thing to note about the game is that it runs like absolute dog shit. My PC can run VR in ultra settings while streaming in 1080p, so I don't often come across games that run poorly on my PC. My initial thoughts were A, this is either terribly optimized, which is a totally reasonable explanation, or B, there is more in this game than I can initially see. Maybe there are too many assets being used at once. The second thing I noticed when starting the game is one very important detail, and I'll let me tell you what it is. These are the hands from Emily Wants to Play. And I wasn't wrong. They are the hands from Emily Wants to Play. Have you got your pencils out, kids? Write that down because it is gonna come up again. Let's talk about this initial foyer. To my right is a giant blackboard with game instructions. 
This is not uncommon. You can catch this in most VR games, uh, like in Drunken Bar Fight, a piece of set that is used to give you information on how to play. The board gives you the only instructions for the game. First off, multiplayer menu, coming soon. To walk, hold grip while moving your hands, hold and drop items using the trigger button. Straightforward. To my left, a second blackboard that reads, Disclaimer, this simulator does not promote any specific idea or religion. Any similitude with the real world may be pure coincidence, built based on ancient and accepted texts. Immediately I realized there is also an unprompted teleport option for locomotion. Why did I know this? Because it's exactly the same as Emily wants to play. Moving on. The foyer looks like this. A square room with an entry door where you start. A wooden double door ahead with a stone arch. Two blackboards on opposite sides of the room and two smaller doors in the, let's say, south corners of the room. Above the door on the right, a symbol not too uncommon to the Illuminati theme, the eye. With the minimal research I've done, I can't seem to find this exact image, but I think I can confidently say it's an original work of some sort. Above the left door is another symbol which appears very similar to the many versions of one of the more popular Freemason symbols. Fairly standard creepy Google grabbed imagery. In the northwest corner of the room is a framed image of what I later worked out was a fairly stock standard Masonic image from the 1800s. In fact, I could have it printed and delivered to my doorstep for under $100. Not bad at all. Around this room and pretty much every other room, you will also see a few repeated items that I'll quickly mention. Giant red books, who gives a fuck? Black and white spheres that seem to represent the black and white squared floors you see a lot in Freemasonry shiz. Eh. And of course, cups, I assume, for drinking liquids out of. Boom. Let's move on to the southwestern room. Small detail, but the doors don't open. Instead, you teleport through them. Weird. I don't really need to detail the room because it's fairly small and easy enough to see for yourselves. But in this room, is where the first mystery lies. As I approach the table ahead, a blue light appears above me. When I go to look at the blue light, it disappears. I move back to repeat what I did, and the blue light appears again. This time, I get a fairly good look at it, but what is it? I try to repeat what I did in order to activate it again with zero success. As I threw the book down, you can see the portal opening again. In the game, I did not notice that this was happening, but as you can see, clearly it is opening above me. I did mess around in this room for a little while, picking up items and moving about, but for all intents and purposes, the room seemed fairly unimportant. I continued my exploration of the game. I moved on to the southeastern room instead, to find a space filled with a lot more masonry imagery. A meeting table complete with chalices and swords, and a giant clock. Moving further into the room, I discovered a more out of place kitchenette and office phone. An untouchable office phone. The drink dispenser was unusable and the cups were empty. I did get somewhat of a creepy vibe from the warning biohazard green goop container that sat on the other side of the bench. But again, like the drinks dispenser, it seemed totally useless and untouchable. The imagery of paper cups, communion biscuits, and poison did send my mind to the obvious history with cults and cult leaders performing genocide on their people with the promise of eternal bliss. From my own research, I can't find any historical or even urban legend stories of Freemasons poisoning their initiates. Except from the plot of the 80s television show Bergerac, season 5 episode 8 to be precise. Anyways, moving on. The entire building consisted of a single floor with a straight shot from the entry door to the main area. Skewing off of this path, similar to in the foyer, were extra rooms and collections of rooms. For the purpose of moving this video along, I'll give you a quick fire of some of the rooms I came across. A small reception-like office, complete with blue screen desktops and office phones. A secret viewing window for a dungeon-like room. A dungeon-like room, complete with torture chair. Yay! A meeting point for many of the rooms with nothing but a giant stone pillar with more carved Masonic imagery. A second office with a large boardroom table, laptops, shared displays and another large framed image. A second secret viewing window for a second creepy dungeon. A second creepy dungeon complete with coffins and skeletons or more imagery. And a small room before the main area that had about 50 swords, reception like benches and more repeated props. Now. Before we enter the main space, let's just recap what we've seen. Nothing. 
Okay, let's power on. When you enter the final and main area of this game, and I say game with air quotes, the first thing you're hit with is goosebumps. Because whilst you've up until this point assumed you were alone, you are now met with more than 50 masked faces. Very eerie. It didn't take me long to realise that these guys were not going to move. I could put my hands through them and they did not react. They were props. The majority of whom had masks and swords and were positioned in some sort of ritualistic pose. They all faced the centre of the room, which made me believe this was finally my goal. But as I approached the lectern, I couldn't see any obvious indicators or interactions. I was stumped. I even tried to mimic the pose of the guys as a gag, but that obviously did nothing. At the top of the stairs were more men, some seated in a row and two of them seated higher on either sides. I stood at the centre table, which like the lectern, was empty. And finally, something happens. The blue light again, just like in the southwestern room. But why did it appear? And how do I make it appear again? You can see me here frantically moving my hands around, trying to repeat positions until I finally realize it's my head that is activating the light. Up and down, left and right, it doesn't really matter so long as I'm not looking directly at it. What the fuck? I was at a loss and I finally decided that the game was a wash. I was done. I wasn't going to be able to do a video like the public speaking simulator game where I talk for 10 minutes because it didn't give me enough reason to open my stupid face. I wasn't going to be able to interact with stuff and make gags because I could barely touch anything and the game ran like poopy bum bums. But maybe there was something I was missing. So I did what any sane person would and I went to check out a walkthrough. Thank you, Matthew Broman. Love you a lot. But as I clicked through, it appeared that no one had made a video on this game. I wasn't surprised, it sucked. And then this is where I realized something kind of strange. When I hovered my mouse over the game tab, it wasn't called Illuminati Simulator VR. It was called Out of Time. In fact, I believe you hear me whisper to myself, what the fuck? Yes, GMAT from the past, I agree. What the fuck? It was time to take a closer look at this game. I went to the discussion board for it to find, luckily, a few posts. Maybe these would give me some guidance on what was going on. There were four posts. One was an update from the developer, which read, 717 portal opens. Time for release arrives. To all initiates, the portal has opened, and it's time to break on through and cross now to the other side of the realm. This simulator allows you to do exactly that, and it's done for all you. The 1% that already enjoys the earthly rewards that you gain when you know how to flow in the river. 717 is now the release date. Be aware, just a few hours to go. The sun is rising. This intrigued me because of two things. A. I now knew the blue light was a portal. And B. The words 1%. This 1% seemed like an intriguing message to players to say that there is something hidden in this game. Find it. Or it meant nothing and the game meant nothing. Either way, I was intrigued. Another thread read like this. How do I join the order? I would like to be a part of something larger than myself. I want to know things that should not be known. I want to learn things that are not taught. Then you've come to the right place, my child. <laughs> you are a child, right? Only children are allowed to be masons for reasons. No, I am not a child, but I am a butt virgin. Does that disqualify me? Yep, moving on. The other two posts were just questions and memes, nothing crucial. There were no videos, screenshots, artwork, anything. My next goal was to work out what the hell out of time was. Considering the game used assets from Emily Wants to Play, I assumed, and with absolutely no knowledge in game development, that the creator simply took another game, ripped out the insides, put their own stuff in it, and then republished it, forgetting to change some of the data files. I don't know if that's a thing or possible, but with no knowledge in the area, it didn't seem outside of reality. So I searched for the game. Unfortunately, I only found a single game by that name. It was never released and looked significantly better than Illuminati Simulator. Expected release 2019. Developed and published by Civil Savages. Did they develop Illuminati Simulator? No. Ricardo Alonso Pina did. Who the fuck is Ricardo Alonso Pina? Let's find out. Did Ricardo develop Emily Wants to Play? 
No. That was Sean Hitchcock. Ricardo, as of making this video, has two games attached to his name. Illuminati Simulator and Peches vs. Zombies. Peches, bad pronunciation, vs. Zombies, looks shit and didn't warrant further exploration. He also had an upcoming release for Learn Spanish VR, which, by the way, also had the Emily Wants to Play hands. Okay, well, let's look at the reviews for Illuminati Simulator. There were only two reviews, both long and both positive. Also, this feels like an important time to mention that I paid $15 for this game. Not crucial, but also I want my $15 back. Where's the money, Lebowski? Review number one reads as follows. First of all, I just want to say this game works perfectly fine on the Valve Index, so probably Vive as well. I don't like the controls, there's no free locomotion and no snap or smooth turning at all. You can teleport, but no way of turning around, blah, 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 blah. The point is, he likes the game. But down the bottom, he says, and I quote, Gameplay-wise, unless you know how to do all 33 Masonic rituals, you've got absolutely no hope of getting very far at all. The second review reads as follows. It is a hard puzzle game. Well, not so hard once you know what to do. My dad was a Freemason and I know a thing or two. You have to keep the portal opened. The portal opens when you're in a certain place, so you have to find a way to keep it open. Once you manage to do it, you have to cross to the other side of the portal and kill the demon with a sword. It is very fun, and I learned a lot just by watching carefully about how the temple is built. I recommend it to people with brain. It's not an action game, that's for sure. So there is a game hidden underneath this pile of turd. My first Google search was fairly half-assed, so I went back and attempted again to find a playthrough of this game, and what do you know? There was one. A 25 minute raw play of the game published by Demina. Dem Demina. Demiana. Demina. Demina? Demina. I'll save you guys the time because I watched every minute of that video and guess what happened? Fuck all. The description was just a copy and paste of the game description and for the first time, I actually read the game description. Illuminati Simulator VR. This simulator features a real and completely accurate Freemasonry temple, as well as an Ordo Templi Orientis Nost. Uh, it is an experience more than a game. When you purchase this title, you can expect to be teleported to a virtual Freemasonry lodge where you'll be able to perform any ritual you may want in a safe place. It lacks tutorial on purpose because it keeps secret what it needs to be kept secret. But if you are a real member, you will find it extremely accurate when you perform the right secret moves. If you're a gamer and you're looking at this game for some fun, consider it as a very hard puzzle where you have to put things in certain places and perform certain moves to unlock more levels. There are more than 33 levels. If you are a member of any order or fraternity, the game won't be hard to beat for you. But if you are a profane, you may most likely won't pass the first level. The multiplayer option will be coming soon. Please support the game waves up and happen. What the fuck? So there is stuff to do. There's 33 levels. What the fuck was I doing? I didn't find anything. Demina didn't find anything. Where are these 33 levels? Cool, thumbs up. What am I missing? How to open portal to another dimension. I was getting desperate. Discussions on physics that went well over my head. String theory, dimensions, quantum physics, fuck. How to open a portal to another dimension, Illuminati slash Freemason. Let's look into the Freemasons. Ritual and symbolism. Compactible. Now it does get a bit more complicated so in short, with string you theory because there are Freemasons even more dimensions, describe it as those a beautiful system of rally compactible. Compactable. Symbolism is mainly not exclusively drawn century, from the tools of the anti-Masons. Jews. Holocaust victims and Freemasons. To join all you have to do is ask Masonic Tracy to have a portal to another dimension. Contact us by email and make it and then enter to the lodge in your area. Secret handshakes and rod of trousers, legs to say accusations, is nepotism, bullying, and repression. First female lodge of Mason's orientation has not always been positive. Masonic initiation rights include the reenactment of the rather extreme. Who the fuck is Abbott Jones? Secret handshakes? Secret handshake? Maybe that's the first step in the game. It was time to get back in. It was time to go hunting for answers. I went straight for the first image to try and find some clues. First thing I noticed was that there was a portal above everyone with a lady emerging from the portal. Portal, awesome. Second thing I noticed was that nobody in the photo was looking at the portal, as if to suggest that looking at the portal makes it disappear. Sound familiar? Well, it should, because it happened to me. I clipped through the map to try and trick the game and find hidden areas, but discovered nothing. I mimicked a painting, 
I clipped through another wall. I touched PCs. I explored and clipped through some more walls. The books did nothing. The candles did nothing. I observed the members and then... Then I became suddenly very scared. With the current knowledge floating around in my head that maybe there was more to this game and maybe I could do something or move something or activate something. Who's to say that one of these guys wasn't going to suddenly move or sneak up behind me? Honestly, I was actually terrified. I noticed the regular members had swords, so I decided to get a sword. I moved to an empty chair and mimicked the members, and here's what happened. Nothing. Nada. Not a damn thing. So if I wasn't supposed to join the ritual, I wasn't able to observe the ritual, then what the hell was I supposed to be doing? Was this all just an elaborate description laid over the top of a very underdeveloped game with prop AI and stolen assets? Probably. But I had to have one last crack at entering the portal to fight the demon. With a little bit of dicking around, I learned that shaking my head no longer opened the portal. Weird. But I could activate the portal by moving my head forward. Oh, this feels like an important time to mention that you aren't actually able to teleport to this bench that faces the portal. You teleport to the stairs and then adopt the swinging arm walking to complete the rest of the trip. I should also point out that this drove me fucking insane. So the head movement and the teleport gave me an idea. The portal opens for less than two seconds, but if the portal truly was a portal, surely the game isn't clever enough to know when it's permanently open and when it is temporarily open. The game puts you in a position where it would be technically impossible to reach the portal in time anyway. So perhaps the developer didn't bother making two different types of portals. Perhaps, theoretically, if I was able to touch the portal during this two seconds, I could bypass some of these mysterious 33 levels and skip straight to using the portal. So I began trying to do that. As you can see, the plan was to take advantage of the Emily wants to play teleport function whilst moving my head forward to open the portal. It would require some good timing but there did seem to be the possibility of reaching it in time. Many failed attempts led me to one single success, but not really. I clearly reached the portal in time, but nothing happened. At least now I knew this was a dead end. After attempting to enter the original portal, I gave up. I spent the next hour reading about rituals and ceremonies, tools and history, in an attempt to get some indication of what my first step would be. I wanted to read anything about swords and books, placement of swords, arm movements, spoken words, perhaps the mic was usable in game. Turns out Freemasons for Dummies was also a wash, and I'll have you know, you can't find step one of the Freemasons ritual by Googling it. Trust me, I tried! And that's it. I've given up. I could continue to pursue this mystery, but what will I uncover? Will I continue to walk in circles in an environment that is designed for me to fail? Is there even the possibility of success? Is the game designed as some elaborate trick where no one can do anything, or is it a genuine challenge in which only 1% can succeed? Is it real? Will more people discover it? And will we ever truly know what the game is about? If people do reveal their success, will they be telling the truth or perpetuating the lie? Why are there stolen assets? What is the biohazard in the kitchenette? Who is Ricardo? Is there a portal? Is there a demon? What happened to the people in the torture rooms? I don't know anything. I don't think anyone truly does know anything about this game. I find it hard to believe that there is a game buried beneath the top layer of this thing. And I don't think I would ever believe anyone who says they went through the portal. All I know is... When I put on my pyjamas and I crawl into bed and I shut my eyes, as I fall asleep, I will continue to hear these words echoing in my mind. 717, portal opens. Nah, not really. 
I'm so sorry to drag you guys down this rabbit hole with me, but I've been thinking about this non-stop and I'm hoping that by making this video, I can finally put it to bed and get back to fart jokes and mediocre streams. Speaking of mediocre streams, please feel free to support me by heading over to twitch.tv forward slash the real GMAT. Twitch is the heart of this channel. The financial support of that platform and the fans over there makes it possible for me to keep making YouTube content. And it's just a romp and a riot. Check out some of the amazing content you've been missing out on. Let's go, let's, go let's go to Disneyland, let's go to Disneyland, let's go to Disneyland, let's go to Disneyland, let's go to Disneyland. I wanna go to Disneyland, come on, let me go to Disneyland. I wanna go to Disneyland, I wanna see Mickey Mouse, I wanna see Goofy, I wanna see Donald Duck, let me go to Disneyland. I wanna see Winnie the Pooh, I wanna see Winnie the Pooh, I wanna see Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh and friends. Let me go to Disneyland, I wanna go to Disneyland, let me go to Disneyland, please let me go to Disneyland, I wanna go to Disneyland, see Winnie the Pooh, see Mickey Mouse, I wanna see Minnie Mouse, I wanna go to Disneyland, I wanna see the heart of the presidents, I wanna go to Disneyland, please let me go to Disneyland. I want to 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 go to Disneyland. Oh my God. Until next time, you guys, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching.